Hey, Brambro back with some aircraft carrier survival. First things first. So a few days ago, <laughs> on my last uh, episode, I pinned a comment saying, Hey, game broken, not doing any more aircraft carrier survival until this is corrected. And over the next couple of days, just the torrent of posts on Steam indicated that everybody was having that problem. And the nature of that problem was you couldn't save the game. In the sandbox mode, you could not save the game at sea or uh, in a mission. You could save it in, right here in Port Pearl Harbor. That was it, but not anywhere else. And since typically you go out and you play multiple missions in sandbox it's several hours of gameplay and th that just didn't work so it wasn't so much a factor of me just saying you know throwing a fit and saying yeah i'm just not going to do any videos I, well i couldn't because <laughs> i couldn't make progress and show anything new um and then on and then on the campaign side uh that people could not continue after a mission, could not progress. Well, uh, so about 30 minutes ago as I'm recording this, uh, a new little update dropped for this game, and I checked it out, tested the saves, and I don't know if it was another corrective patch or if they simply rolled back the hotfix that caused the problem. Either way, uh, that problem appears to have been corrected. So I'm back with some more ACS. I'm not going to talk any more about that because it's not a fun topic. Right, so I had, after the last uh, published episode, I did just a couple of more kind of, you know, ID and detect type missions to get a, just a couple more upgrade points. And here we are. We have a Yorktown class carrier which I am keeping it no I'm not eh. what well, when I do it in all caps uh, the little in bleeds off the bottom there anyway I'm calling it the Yorktown obviously of the class probably the USS Enterprise CV6 was the most famous and illustrious of the three but uh, during the critical months of early 1942, if you just really go through and read the, you know, just read the accounts of the, the battles during that time period, uh, you know, Coral Sea and Midway and the movements and campaigns and strategies uh, even leading up to those, that my favorite was the Yorktown. And that's what I'm calling her. That's about all there is to that. So, what is the Yorktown giving us that we did not have in Lexington? In terms of its stats, you, you know, these things, and not really that much more. Same radar range as the fully upgraded Lexington that we transitioned from. Of course, now there's more room to improve that, but right now it's the same. The same three AA stations. We can upgrade it to four. And... The, the same 30 planes, which is what the fully upgraded Lex has. But we can upgrade that to 36. But I'm not going to focus on these upgrades uh, for now. Because I kind of rushed through the Lexington a little bit to get to this carrier. And I think I need to shift my focus to number one priority is upgrading the aircraft I'm still on the Buffalo the Vindicator and the Devastator so the next uh, what is it gonna be yeah the next six upgrade points I think are gonna go to bumping up to Wildcat Dauntless Avenger and then the next thing I want to do after that is uh, work a little bit on our escorts uh, another escort slot for two upgrade points and need to get I think some more and some different escorts a lot of good choices uh, haven't fully decided what to go for first but I think the short list is uh, I like the uh, I like the Fletcher 2 
I like the look of the Sims. So those those are going to be considered. Um, all the cruiser ones look pretty good. The uh, the Cleveland, the Brooklyn, the there's actually two different Clevelands. I guess I should look in. In in any case, there's a bunch of good choices. Haven't fully decided which ones to get first. What I want the eventual full fleet to look like uh, but aircraft first escort second uh, I may work in I may work in another officer I don't know I'm a little weak I'm, I, I'm pretty weak on officers right now on the air side I got good uh, C right the uh, the brown number at the top that is C uh, the blue number at the bottom that is air uh, because I you know I didn't finish talking about Yorktown itself these stats talked about that but what Yorktown brings with it is uh, three elevators instead of one it's really two elevators at once because there's a forward and an aft elevator so one of these is going to be uh, unusable depending on if you're in launch or recovery state because there's going to be aircraft parked on top of it but they're at any given time will be able to operate two elevators instead of one whether that really speeds up uh, efficiency on moving players up and down to from the hangar bay we'll see Yorktown can can hold seven squadrons on deck instead of six so that gives us more flexibility in flight operations and it also increases the side uh, size of the uh, airstrikes that we can send so that'll be good uh, the island has I don't remember the exact it has 10 control rooms in it with 10 switches instead of Lexington's nine so um, there's a so there's another option for a uh, setting for the carrier in this island than Lexington had and finally in Lexington we could only have one order active at a time you know replenish uh, enhanced radar range what have you in Yorktown we get two we can have two orders active at once which is why I'm kind of thinking I need to do something about officers because on the Lexington could only have one order at a time active therefore the admiral character i.e. you know the player uh, character is all you needed for orders you never needed to use officers for orders because the animal could just do it all by himself instead of dedicating two officers to it now with the ability to have two orders active at one time gonna need officers and most of the officers uh, most of the orders have an air component and a sea component to its requirements so I gotta do something about this guy which is a problem because he has this nice card that I like to use <laughs> which means I've been upgrading this guy for this card but meanwhile he's only a one skill officer and so I think I may have kind of screwed myself there because I want to keep him for the card but he's not going to be very useful for um, using for orders I don't quite know. I'm kind of thinking maybe I need to uh, get rid of this guy and uh, get a better air officer in place of this guy since I haven't invested money in his card or points in his card. Anyway, I'm kind of getting off on a tangent there. So that's what the Yorktown is giving us. Um, 
And then finally, there is one extra crew slot, which I did hire a new crew member, and that's this fellow right here. So that's the new carrier. That's kind of the outlook on what we're going to use our upgrade points over the next few missions. Not all of which are going to be published. I, you know, I publish one every so often. I'm not trying to make a minute-for-minute -minute chronology here. But let's go out and see how Yorktown does in action. See what kind of missions we got out here. Okay, so that looks like a fleet defense mission there. Okay, this one smells like one of those trap missions where it sounds easy, <laughs> but the fleets get further and further apart and you wind up not being able to kill them all, or it's on a timer. And this looks like a fleet defense while staying undetected mission. You know what? Let's go try this thing. Maybe we'll get a nice optional mission on the way. Pause for a second. What's this? Locate and destroy enemy fleet. Yeah, it's on the way. Sure. Just to put Yorktown through our paces. <clears throat> it's actually part of the reason why I was so annoyed a few days ago at not being able to continue and do an episode because I had just unlocked this. And I ran into the save game problem while I was trying to record an episode to show uh, the new carrier. Okay, locate and destroy enemy fleet. I bet you when we get in there, there's going to be a catch. Sir, a new objective is awaiting. Okay. Well, for one thing, they don't exactly tell you where it is. Well, let's go check out this guy first. Get to see you got the two order slots down here now in Yorktown. Hmm. On the double. Let's get uh, let's get some dive bombers on bomber first, on the deck. so we have our identify mission aircraft ready to go. Let's see what kind of mess that uh, changing carriers has done to my crew. Oh my goodness. All right, engineer guy to here, DC guy to here, medical guy to here, nav guy down to here, and the aircraft guy up to here. And I should have another air guy somewhere. No? I thought I had three air guys. All right, well, we'll put uh, double generalist guy in air, and you guy can learn the ropes getting OJT and uh, nav. Okay, that looks better. Let's check out this island. Let's see what that's all about. So it's split fore and aft. I guess because the stack goes up the middle here. <laughs> Not a big fan of how it, in the default view, it cuts off the uh, text box on the end. Okay. That seems fine for now. I think that's okay. Uh, that's fine. Efficiency in air, sure. 
Oh, see, th so this is the new room with orders we did not have in Lexington. We can shorten the uh, night, thereby lengthening the fly day. We can make orders last 50% longer. And right now, apparently, I have selected shorten the escort active abilities cooldown. I think that sounds fine for now. Yeah, uh, I like, uh, you know, let's get the carrier defense. <laughs> I just like having that. All right, let's check out the aft. Two recon. Uh, I think I'm going to use scouts for that. Speaking of which, let's get them out. Launch aircraft. So let's switch this. Awaiting orders. Switch this to airstrike. Okay. I think efficiency in DC is fine. And that's fine. Yeah, I think down here, I, um, so I've prioritized having two airstrikes and I intend to use scouts. I, I do want to have one recon mission on the bar though. I think that makes sense. I may come up with some, some situation may come up where I want to recon instead of scout. really bring out the fact that she's wooden deck, don't they? I mean, I think Lexington was too, but it didn't, doesn't stand out like this. An objective has been completed, sir. There he is. Okay, well, we don't need to get any closer to him. No need to be detected before we hit our, hit our first strike. And so, let's get that Identify Target mission out there. Stand by to start engine! Light carrier, battle cruiser, and two destroyers. We do not have time to launch a strike. Or do we? Slow down. Island. Awaiting orders. Roger that. Now we do. No, we don't. Ah, still night. Maybe you have to do it while it's still daylight. Maybe the entire two hour difference comes on the morning end, so it gets light at three instead of five. Kind of thought they would chop an hour off either way on each side. Anyway, it's night. We can't launch a strike now. Nor do I know if... I don't think we can even prepare one now. Because it will, it will expire. What we can do... Is 
Let's kind of look and see what kind of card. Uh, okay, defense of maneuver four, thirty percent block salts. That's not too terribly bad. So let's go anvil. There's one that. Okay, this one's not that good if we can't have supportive maneuvers. really get us that much? That's a lot of torpedo bombers. Yeah, and jinking. Okay, we need to add some defense. doesn't have to go here. Well, it kind of does because of jinking. How about Bulwark? Slot two ninety two thirty two or hundred and fourteen thirty two. And that's all we can do. So the attack is pretty darn good. And we'll destroy most of the fleet. We're gonna get beat up pretty bad though. Makes me wonder if maybe uh, Leap of Faith might not be a better choice. Attack wise, yeah, we're backing off the attack a good bit. However, I think it's a better. If this were the main mission, I'd probably go with the other one. But since this is an optional mission and we still have the main mission to do after this, I don't want to lose a lot of planes. Plus, losing planes costs money, right? Let's go with this. And so, because of that, we're not actually doing this yet. We we're just having a look at what kinds we need. And we need three fighters and four torps. Okay. So two of our fighters are already airborne. We'll bring the dive bombers back and put them in the hangar bay. So we so to bring up on deck we need one fighter in four torpedo planes. Issue a fighter squadron on the deck. An F okay. Well the flight deck Q is full. Issue 
Okay. Torpedo bomber squadron on the deck. So once this package is spotted, then we need to switch to recovery. What's our speed? Oh, let's let's move. <laughs> That does not look like a very big radius for it. Well, I don't have radar active. Better get to it. Full focus now. But even with scouts out. Let's just match her course. Due west. Issue a torpedo bomber squadron on the deck. Issue a torpedo bomber squadron on the deck. Clear the flight deck. A plane is approaching landing. Okay, these will go in the hangar bay. Stand by to recover aircraft. Two elevators at a time, or two planes at a time on the first uh, strike down. Okay, and these guys can just stay on deck because now they're going to be part of the strike package. So, let's get our radar up, and uh, same old, same time to work. our radar backup, I should say. Let's, what else might we want? And here's exactly what I was talking about. I'm using the Admiral for the radar, and now this guy's limiting me to, I could do defensive position, I could do fire control, I could do some of these, but I cannot do tactical mission focus. I can't do plane fuel management. I can't do deck control. Because I only have this guy with a 1 in air. Sure, why not? Let's have an extra DC team. And actually, I don't need that guy at all for that. I can use Sir. this dude by himself. On my way. No need to have them all on fires. On One on maintenance, and then medical things always seem to crop up from non-combat eventualities. Let's do that. Fast forward to about 3.30. Well, actually even later than that. I don't see that that island, I don't see that that island setting did me any good. Oh, maybe it'll be at 4 o'clock. No, it's not. We don't we don't need to maintain distance now. Okay, that was uh, ten fish here, anvil here. 
here, Jin King here. Looks like kind of the sequence where they line up for takeoff is a little different than it is on Lexington as well. I don't know if I could tell without a stopwatch. It kind of looks like they may take off a little faster. At least the animation looks a little more sensible. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see that this did anything for us. It looks like the same time, maybe because I was a little late and I activated it at night. Maybe this doesn't take effect until the following night. That's probably what happened. Okay, strike is away. Let's get... Uh, We're almost certainly going to want at least two torpedo bombers and two fighters on the next strike package. I mean, the next strike package may look different since we'll have different targets. May want to use different cards. But Anvil gets you for me, for me anyway. For me, Anvil gets used just about every time. So let's bring up uh, two torpedo bombers for that. Jinking is almost always there. It's a great multiplier card. So it's got at least one fighter on deck. Issue a torpedo bomber squadron on the deck. Issue a fighter squadron on the deck. It's nice having that extra squadron. The makeup of the strike that's in the air now was not possible from Lexington because it has seven squadrons in it. Okay. Oh, he might outrun the... I don't think that strike's going to work. See, the center of his icon was just outside the window. Those guys are moving fast. Okay. Uh, we need to get that same strike up, so we need two more torps and two more fighters. Okay, let's try and get it right on the edge. I forgot the makeup. Was it 10 fish? <laughs> 
Anvil goes here. Chinking and bulwark. That doesn't that doesn't look right. That's the one. Issue a fighter squadron on the deck. And then we're going to have to recover. Issue a fighter squadron on the deck. No, I can't do that yet. I think I'm about to be detected. Uh, engineer guy. Let's plus up nav. As soon as we can, let's ring up a full bell. Walk faster, guy. There we go. Am I still in the recovery area for this? Yeah. We'll be fine to reco recover him. Uh, I'm going to leave a slot open for defense. We're going to be detected pretty soon, one way or another. We'll bring that DC back up, though. <laughs> Ready, sir. That sounds like a good idea. We'll recover all these on deck. Stand by to recover aircraft. Okay, we got two destroyers and took a life off of the light carrier, but we lost three squadrons. Kind of hoping that those would come back damaged rather than lose them outright. We are detected, so we're going to have attacks coming in pretty soon. I have to fully recover this airstrike before I can plan the next. I could activate an order for an airstrike. 
but I want to leave this slot free for defense. And I'm going to go with the same exact package just because I know I have the aircraft for those on deck right now. There is a fire below deck. Sir, damage control is needed. I got guys on that. I don't need two guys on that. Here, go to uh, the mechanics. After the launch is... Oh, okay, I've already got launch queued up. Good. This should be the last squadron we're covering now. Total destruction and ensure safety. Sounds like a winner. Oh, they're still moving. Aren't you? There you go. I think when we upgrade all the aircraft, that the first thing that happens is it just buffs all their defense. That should help a lot with uh, aircraft loss on these first strikes against undamaged enemy task forces. Oops. Well, we need to be back over here for the recovery area. As soon as these guys are off, I need to switch back to recovery so we can recover the other strike.
let's get Chicopee to replace our torpedo bomber losses. That's a nice ability. I know there's better escorts and she will be replaced, but it's still a <laughs> it's still a pretty nice ability. Okay, that fleet is dead. I think that's gonna complete the mission for us. Yep. Okay, so we just got a couple of command points that we do, but medals. We do have the new crew member. Hopefully he comes up eligible for something. Yeah, he does. How does that guy have a three? I think I might have wasted a medal on him not realizing that you can only go up that he could only have two badges. Okay. I don't quite know what I want him. Hopefully he gets an heir. No, he does not. Well, I'm gonna give him general list for now. Hopefully he comes up. Air on the next one. Okay, well I'm not going to give any medals to these guys because it would be superfluous. So it comes down to, looks like I've been working on this guy, Leap of Faith card. Yeah, well, I just used it. So I'll probably use it again. I also used 10 fish. This one's already been upgraded one level. Let's start upgrading this one over here. Roger that. Okay, that mission is done. And now, oops. What was that? Yeah, we can lose 10 hours of time. So now, something I could not do all weekend. Ta-da! I would have been so pissed if it had broken right there. Okay, I think that will do for this episode of Aircraft Carrier Survival, seeing the Yorktown in action. So if you like the content, and I've got other naval games on the channel, um, and I also do a lot of Civil War games too right now, but in any case, if uh, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even a sub, but in any case, thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate it.